Okay, example one, use substitution to solve this, and if we take a look at it, obviously it's not set up well for substitution. The reason why we're going to use substitution to solve these is our newest problems that we just started dealing with, the nonlinear systems of equations. Sometimes we have to use substitution, right? Because the variables don't match up. And up till now, those, those have all been friendly. Um, you've been able to get x equals y equals without any, any of these ugly fractions. Um, the purpose of this problem is to practice in an easy setting the idea of substitution when substitution is not as friendly to do because there's times when substitution cannot be avoided. So, I have to pick um, one of these equations to solve for one of these variables. I'm going to pick the top equation for y. The reason I chose that one is because 2 is the smallest coefficient. that will make the easiest fractions in my opinion. All right. If I take the top equation and make it say y equals, first thing I do is move the 3x over here. That gets me 2y is equal to negative 3x minus 3. Divide by 2, I get y is equal to negative 3x over 2 minus 3 over 2. I do recommend getting individual pieces like that instead of just negative 3x minus 3 all over 2, separated into individual pieces. I think you'll find that to be easier. As substitution always works, I got this information here from the top equation, which means I'm going to substitute this information back into the bottom equation. The substitution is what it always has been. y equals this expression. I take y out of this equation, change it to that expression. So the bottom equation becomes 4x minus 3, but instead of y, I'm going to put negative 3x over 2 minus 3 over 2 equals 13. So the bottom equation is 4x minus 3y equals 13, but y got replaced with y's equivalent value, negative 3x over 2 minus 3 halves. That's the substitution step. The next thing I want to do now is I want to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So if I take negative 3 times both of those, I'm going to get 4x plus 9x over 2 plus 9 over 2 is equal to 13. Now that I've done that step and that there's no more parentheses in the problem, if I don't want to have fractions, I can now multiply everything times 2 if I feel like it. That gets me 8x plus 9x plus 9 equals 26. So we have to deal with that ugliness of a fraction expression for a couple steps, but then once we get the parentheses out, multiplying by common denominator, it gets rid of fractions like usual. As long as there's an equation, that's a legal step. Move the 9 to this side, I'm going to get 17x is equal to 17. That gets me x equals 1. Once I know that x equals 1, this says y equals negative 3 halves x minus 3 halves. So y equals negative 3 times 1 over 2 minus 3 halves. That's just negative 3 halves minus 3 halves, which is negative 6 halves, better known as negative 3. We've got our answer 1, negative 3. Obviously, elimination is simpler. Okay? The idea, though, is that this is a pretty simple type of problem to be able to practice some uglier stuff so that when we have to do this thing squared, because we have to use um, substitution in a nonlinear system of equations, we're at least comfortable with the, uh, the technique of doing it. Again, you're going to get some object like this, simplify, and then get rid of the fractions after you've got, gotten rid of parentheses.